I'm sure that we're all very used to these Zoom meetings and we're all exactly know what we're going to be doing from, from time to time. Um, I would like to, again, welcome you all, you coaches to the Intermediate Strut webinar. You know, this is a very exciting time for the USTA because the USTA now has new strut music. And, you know, we have this event that we're now promoting called Strut that um, has a new face, as it were. And this as, is as a result of that new music for sure. But before we get started, I do want to introduce the coaches department because what we do, coaches, is my role as the director of, uh, of uh, professional development and you know, in conjunction with all of the leadership and the, in conjunction with all of the departments, we're here for you. We serve you and you serve your athletes. So without you coaches, we are nothing. So we, we try to do as much as we possibly can to make sure that you're well equipped, that your questions are answered, that you have all the information that you need in order to make your program, your students a success. We want you to be a success. So I would like to introduce at this time, the coaches department, it's, it's headed by a very famous uh, group of people. They're very, very famous. You know, first of all, we have Jackie Stewart, who is, uh, you know, a very famous race car driver. I'm sure that you know her, right? Jackie Stewart. Second of all, we have Paige Campbell. She was the original Campbell kid and she makes great tomato soup. We have Cassandra Broadway. Now what's more famous or what's more of a star than Cassandra Broadway with a name like that, right? And of course we have Corey Kenyon Cruz who is going to be co-hosting this evening and teaching you this intermediate strut routine. But anyway, I did want to introduce the coaches department and um, make sure that you all are very familiar with their name. And we're going to be, they are going to be working alongside me with, um, with them and, and all the other department leaders in order to, again, as I said, to bring success to you in any way we possibly can. And these webinars are simply the start. Okay, so we have a gift for you. As you know, uh, we've already done the beginner and the novice strut routine webinar, which is, which is excitingly enough on YouTube. I watched it tonight actually before I started uh, this webinar. It's on YouTube, it's very clear. This one as well will be on YouTube so you can reference it anytime that you wish. And we have a gift for you and this gift is all this information. We're Like I said, we're trying to make this as successful for you and uh, as giving to you as possible because it's really important to us that our coaches are successful because like I said, without you guys, we're no one and we, we won't have athletes and we need athletes obviously in order for the USCA to succeed. So that is, that's why we're here this evening. You know, it's a gift to you and you know, we want to promote strut and we want to make sure that it's fun and, and it's a cool thing to do because once the kids love it and once the kids are used to it and once they understand it, it is a fun, fun event. And I'll explain why here in a little bit. Okay. So as I said before, you know, our vehicle is the music. We've got this great music and guess what it's called? Strut, great name for it, right? So anyway, we have the new vehicle for this great event called Strut and it's all about the rhythm. It's all about technique and style and it's gonna be beautiful. The Strut now will have its own identity and we're hoping that it's gonna be one of the favorite events at a contest by the athletes and certainly the coaches. You know, it's uh, intermediate strut now starts to take on a little bit of a different flavor in upper body nuances. And we begin to use the and count, which we'll explain later on. And the music inspires everything. I'm sure that you all have heard the music and the music is very flavorful. It has a great personality. And I think that the kids kind of relate to it. You know, and once they get the routine, you know, they're some, some of the little kids that I've talked to about this, they, they think it sounds like a princess from Disneyland or, you know, some, some cartoon character or whatever, you know, and they, that's kind of an inspiration for them to expressively project this routine. So we're really excited about this new face of strut and we hope that you will be too. Okay. Um, you know, strut is like anything else that we do in USCA, it's a building block. It's very important that 
as you know, your own your own progressive syllabus in your own studios, coaches, you know that you, you have to uh, make and build these blocks, you know, for the development and the progressive uh, progression of, of the athletes. So we move from beginner, novice to beginner, and now into the intermediate. And you have tools uh, available to you already that you may not even realize you had. You know, for those of you who are involved in the competitive achievement system, the CAS program within USCA, you know that you have body moves that are already defined for you in a progressive fashion, and that's known as movement technique. And you also have moves with the baton that is very progressive, known as compulsories. Now, if you use those, great. If you don't use those, you still can do this, this event. That's It's not you know, uh, a requirement that you have that, but it's it's certainly an added tool that you have at your disposal in order to build these building blocks for your athletes. We have vocabulary moves, you know, such as bump maws and PKs and sautés and lunges and plies and all these wonderful French names, you know, that that are that are used within the movement technique. And I'll talk a little bit about that um, in a in a bit, you know. But these are all things too that that the athletes will learn as they build their skills with the strut event. You know, the moves can be combined, you know, with a lot of different types of, of, of skills. You do want to keep in mind, and as we've said all along, particularly as we introduce the new face of strut, this is a body dominant event. It's not about baton tricks. It's not about seeing how hard something can be done. It's about being in step using correct, good body technique for whatever level that they're at, either novice, beginner, or intermediate, or advanced, or, or elite, whatever that is appropriate to that level, and being correct. You know, we want strut to have a new face because we want it to be rare that anybody would ever drop the baton, and we want it to be rare that anybody would ever want to be out of step. So we want it to be that type of approach. Now, how do we get that? Well, we want, it's, it depends on you. It depends on you solely to conform to those types of, of approaches so that your students will approach this event the correct way. And then the judges will be able to judge it the correct way. And the strut will then evolve to the personality and the whole flavorful event that we really wish it to be. So it's all about you coaches and we're depending on you. So we're going to you're going to create, you know, you can create a lot of things on your own. There's a lot of creativity involved in, in, in this. And I think that you're going to really have fun with um, all of those, all of those moves as, as we move uh, forward, you know, going into, into the, uh, the new event of stride. Okay. So the next thing I would like to talk about is the uh, Knowledge Central. Though for those of you who are professional members, you know that you can go to Knowledge Central and there's a vast, array of knowledge there that you can um, download, you can read, there's, there's information galore. And if you don't know anything about it, this information right here tells you all about Knowledge Central. It's part of the USCA website. And it's so, so important for all of you coaches to really understand that because everything that we've talked about, everything that we talk about basically in um, um, these webinars anywhere else is all going to be on Knowledge Central. So it's really important that you go there. If you're not a professional member, I do encourage you to, to obtain a professional membership through USCA so that you're gonna have access to all of those uh, wonderful materials. Okay. All right, so, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna start and going, we, when we go from the beginner and the novice event, we move up into the, the area of uh, intermediate, we now start utilizing a little bit more body work. A lot of these things I'm going to talk to you about is certainly um, definitely familiar to you. But I want to talk about the cabriole. The cabriole is one of the most misunderstood uh, moves in, in USTA or in strut or any movement. You know, we see it a lot. There's a front cabriole and a back cabriole. And a lot of people misinterpret that and they think it's, you know, all you got to do is just hike your legs up and clang your feet together and you're good to go. Well, as you probably know, that's not the case. So what I want to do is 
because this is such an important thing to really remember, and there's so, so many dynamics and, and qualities of the cabriole that actually apply to other moves too. I'm gonna to have Corey now actually explain the teaching of this and some of the details of it. So Michael, let's, uh, let's uh, focus on Corey and then uh, I'll come back and we'll go on to the next move here. All righty. Hi. Okay, so we're going to work on a cabriole and we're going to do it in the style that we're going to be able to use um, within our count structure, within our left right counts of the strut. Um, if you have seen um, some ballerinas, well, maybe even the, the male dancer, um, they can do a cabriole and then they get a really high batma out of it. Maybe you've seen Barishnikov or some of other famous um, male dancers do this wonderful, wonderful cabriole. Um, in our case, we have to be able to do it within our count structure. So we're gonna do it by stepping. Um, so when you step, you're gonna step turned out, toe first, okay, and you're gonna use your plie. Your right foot, in our case, we're doing a right cabriole for our strut today. So you're gonna brush through your first position. Let me scoot back just a little bit so you can see my feet. Okay, so you're gonna step, use your plie, you're gonna brush through the first position and you're gonna turn out. So you're using your heel as if a string is attached and you're gonna lift that um, foot, the, your right leg into about a 45. Um, because any more than that, it's gonna be hard to do the correct technique, especially at an intermediate level. So you're gonna brush, okay? And then your bottom leg, which is in the plie, is going to meet the top leg. This top leg shouldn't move at all. So you're gonna brush, that one beats, and then you land, uh-oh, and then you land in the plie of the left leg. Um, sometimes I teach it with a chair, okay? So you get, your athlete can be in first position, but remember in strut, we're gonna step into it and you're gonna brush through that plie, turn out, point that toe, it's a nice turned out leg, your bottom leg meets the top leg and the top leg, the goal is for the top leg not to, not to lower to the bottom leg. Um, and in fact, in ballet, they really want that top leg to go higher after the beat. In our case, staying right here still for intermediate strut would be great and it stays turned out. Okay, the second thing about the technique of the cabriole is that it's really a cross of the upper thighs. Your hips are um, turned out from the hip socket um, so I usually have my kids sit and you can either do it here, cross your legs and lift so that they feel that from crossing above the thigh, above the knees, or I have them lay on their back because maybe that's more comfortable for that intermediate athlete. So you can see that cross, it's turned out and it's not hitting or tapping of the feet at all, okay? It's crossed way, way above the knee as much as you can. So that's going to look like, in our case for today, one and two, okay? So that's going to also use the and count that Dale just talked about a little bit. So left and uh, right, okay. All right, all right, so that was a great explanation. That was exactly what I wanted to hear, you know, because as a judge and even as a coach, you know, you, if the kids haven't been trained in ballet or dance, you know, they, we mimic a lot, don't we? And, you know, of course, novice, beginner and intermediates, aren't, they're not gonna be trained professional dancers. And of course they're gonna do it at their level, but it's our job as coaches to understand the mechanics and the techniques behind these moves so that we approach it with these, the children the right way. You know, they're gonna get a little bit better as they do it. They're gonna get turned out. They're gonna, they're gonna understand the move. And, and our job is to understand, the, like I said, the, the mechanics behind that. So it's important that, um, that we know that as coaches. And then likewise, as we judge too, we'll be able to judge um, the, proper, the proper moves as well. Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about is the no, it's not the changement. It is, it's the changement, you know? So um, I love that. It makes me want to order like a croissant or something in a restaurant when I say that <laughs> with a nice latte. But anyway, the, uh, the changement, very similarly, is a move that is very, very appropriate for intermediate strut. 
it's a very, very well-defined move. And um, as you can see, the definition is, is here. And this move is introduced in today's strut by Corey. And it will be, it's an absolute move that you can do in step uh, thoroughly with some minimal baton work that is very, very appropriate. And now we're gonna go back to Corey and then she's gonna show us the, the, uh, the specifics about the changement. All righty. Okay. And Michael, we'll go back to uh, Corey at, at the gym there. Okay. All right, so I'll back up so you can see. So um, our shanjma is going to be from fifth position. Um, make sure that your athlete is standing with um, their body aligned correctly and use a good plie. Um, and all we're gonna do is we're gonna use our plie and we're gonna push off the ground, jump up and change the leg that's in front, okay? So we're gonna jump really high and change legs and that's all. And then land back in a plie. Um, we're going to do that with the rhythm of the strut music, left, right, but we could also do left, right, because your weight is now on both legs. So either way you choose which is going to work in your choreography and your design so that you tell your athlete which leg is going to be the left and the right because you're using both feet. Does that make sense? So the most important thing about the shantma, besides the staying in step business, is that you use your plie, that you send your feet, your um, weight, your energy, everything straight up, and you really use your feet and point your toes, squeeze, and then change. Because that'll set you up maybe later for an entre chocolate or royale in our future. Great. All right. Thanks, Corey. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so, you know, having said that about the cabriole and the changement, you know, as you can see now, everything is really body dominant, right? We're really talking about body work, you know, at a intermediate level, that's very appropriate for, you know, for the strut routine, for sure. Make sure coaches that you are approaching the event first with the body. In fact, many coaches will construct an entire routine with just the body with and using air baton so that it doesn't become trick oriented with the baton, but it becomes body dominant. And then the baton then is laid on top of it later. That's going to complement and be a, you uh, be accompanying, you know, the body work on that. So I think that's important to, to consider, you know, when you're teaching your athletes and, you know, there's a, there'll be a lot of repetition. There's nothing wrong with doing a few changements in the, in the program or a few cabrioles in the program. What you don't want to do coaches is you don't want to take tricks that are out of their solo and just stick them in the strut routine because they can do that trick. If they can do a two turn blind, it's probably not appropriate to do that in your strut routine. Okay. So, if, you know, you, just because they can achieve something in solo doesn't mean it's appropriate here. So you have to kind of change your mindset and your way of thinking. Okay, so the illusion. Oh my goodness, let's talk about the illusion, shall we? The reversal, I've got it on the slide here is a reverse illusion, but it's any illusion, um, forward or, or reverse. We're proud of our illusion, aren't we? You know, the illusion now is identified as our move in twirling. It's our move, we, we own it, but coaches, you know, once you can do an illusion and we've done a few illusions, we don't need to do more and more and more illusions. Why? Well, because that cuts into variety, right? Nobody wants to see a bunch of illusions. It's not, it's, the event's not called illusion skill, it's called strut. And the other thing is, is that if you have your kids doing too many illusions, what's gonna happen? They're gonna kill their hips. You know, so you're gonna really, really injure them. So you gotta be very, very careful because as you know, if, from your dance training, if you've got dance training behind you, everything you do on the right, you do on the left, you do forward, you re do reverse, you use all sides of your parts and you know planes of your body in order to develop an equal uh, level of, of uh, musculature. So that's really important to keep in mind as you as you go through your strut e evolvement with your with your students. You know, make sure that even if you don't do a left illusion that they learn to do a left illusion and they, they learn to do all sides of an illusion just for the, the, uh, the balance of the body, just for a health sake, please. 
because how many times have we seen athletes when they get to be 15, 16, 17 years old, they can't do illusions anymore because they're, they're too injured or they pull muscles and, you know, it just becomes really a problem. Even though we're very proud of our illusions, aren't we? Because there's so many things in twirling that we can do with an illusion. So we have to be really creative and very selective now with how we're gonna utilize this illusion in, in the routine. Now we're gonna go back to Corey in the gym and she's gonna talk a little bit more about the specifics of our friend, the illusion. Corey, take it away. Okay. All righty. Um, so, um, host, unmute myself. There we go. I'm unmuted now. Okay. Um, so there's a few things about illusions. The first thing is um, your athlete should be flexible enough to do an illusion. You shouldn't try and teach the illusion if your athlete has limited flexibility. Um, and that's something that you should develop by stretching. Um, and there are many, many good stretches, but really sitting in a split um, with your hips squared and your um, back knee straight and making a nice solid um, forward line and keeping in this alignment. And however far, let's say they got this far holding that, okay? And then maybe holding it arched back with something and then lower and lower. And then they should be able to really do a pretty full split um, to do a correct illusion, okay? The other thing about the reverse illusion is to have some kind of a release of your head and upper body. When you learn, um, when kids learn maybe the forward illusion first, they're gonna learn it kind of in three steps. They're gonna learn the needle. So start as if you're, I would say, as if you're gonna do a cartwheel and they're gonna go with their hips squared to the front and their arms and shoulders squared over their hips to do that needle. And then the second step to arch their back a little bit and then to come up. Okay, and then to add the second thing to that is to do their needle. Now you're gonna start to the front and you're gonna do that needle, but you're gonna turn your body to the back, walk your body around, lift that head, and then come to the front. That's kind of the second step. Sometimes I help them with their hand when they're learning how to do the motion of a forward illusion. Okay, then in the reverse, it's kind of the same. Just walk them through that motion. So the needle first, arch, and then step down and then add the, the rotation, okay? So you're gonna needle, rotate around, get to the side, arch your back, and then stand up to the front, okay? And then you're gonna use that swing. You're using the release um, and the counterbalance of your upper body and lower body so that your hands and your leg stay in a line. So it should be exactly that nice vertical circle as you come around. Okay, and that's gonna be the best, you're gonna have the best results if you release the upper body. Don't try and hold tension in your head or neck, okay? Um, also, one more thing about that, the illusion to be in step, you are, we're gonna use a right side illusion since, oh, a lot of our, a lot of our athletes are right-sided. Right um, we're gonna do it in step and you need to make sure that you allow a step into it, however that might be, okay? It could be lots of places, lots of different places, a step forward, a step back. It could be from, from a passe. Um, and then when you do the reverse illusion, that, that only gets one count. And then you have to be able to step on your left step again. All right. Great, great, thanks, Corey. Hey. Uh -huh. Yeah, that was great. Okay, so Corey, that was a good illusion too, by the way. Oh, Both thanks. sides on equals equal. Very good. I love that. <laughs> so about the illusion, just a, a little bit of a you know an added uh, word about that. You know, it's d coaches. You know, you think because everybody does an illusion, right? Does my athlete have to do an illusion if they can't? Should they just if if they can't do an illusion and it's really really bad should i just put it in and hope that someday it's going to get better no don't use it you can do an entire routine without doing an illusion you know it's you know you can work on the illusion you need to work on that but you don't want to throw something in there where a judge would go ew or uh, or cringe or 
anything like that, you know, you have to use your own judgment. We're trusting you coaches that you're going to do the right thing and only put on the floor with these routines, things that are acceptable and correct for their level. Now, like I said, they're not going to be professional dancers, but it's going to be for their level. Um, and illusion is one of the biggest mistakes because we see illusions. Why? Bad technique. Usually it's with the baton that they are going to struggle with. And then it's typically, historically, we've seen this, it'll get out of step. So it's almost like, you know, it has double jeopardy to it or triple jeopardy to it. So be careful with an illusion. Only use it when it's really ready, okay? All right. So, okay, now the and count. All right, this is, this is, uh, this is a cool little tool that we have here. Now, if you're a musician, if you, if you play an instrument or if you've been in marching band, you know exactly what we're talking about here that the end count is subdividing a beat or it's borrowing from the beginning or the end of a count on either side of it. Now, this is used in choreography to stay in step. And for those of you with a lot of experience with um, intermediate or advanced level athletes, you know that sometimes you'll do like a chasse, for instance, and then a grand bat ma because you want the grand bat ma to be held for a count and a half for an extension purposes. So you're borrowing from the beat before in order to elongate a certain move for, for a move. So this is, that's how we utilize this. And I think there's certain things that, um, that we've done that really help that. It's a tool that we use. We do want to caution you coaches that it's very important that you are careful with this and move and that the, the, well, that you first are careful with it, but then really teach your students what the and move is because you don't want them to be out of step and not know why they're out of step when you thought that they understood that they were using the and move. Yeah, I hope that makes some sense. If it doesn't and you're still, still confused, Corey will go and explain this all a little bit more further to us. Okay, Corey. Okay, um, so in our in our novice and our beginning strut, we actually already have an example. So I'm gonna start with that one. Um, so we do um, a, just a saute, okay? Just even a parallel. Um, even in that basic move, you're stepping with your left foot, okay? And then you're jumping, but you have to put this one down again on the end count before you step um with your other foot so this is actually a one and two okay so that's already a, an example we also do it with the double knee jump and then we're going to in our intermediate strut do it um with a turned out with a turned out knee so one and two but also when you start combining these movements um, that's where it gets maybe a little bit tricky. So um, today we're going to do this combination. So we're going to do a saute and we're going to do a turned out passe, one and two. Then we're going to go three and four. So we're going to do kind of two in a row where we're using that and count. So it's going to go one and two, three and four, so that you have to be a little bit quick. For our intermediate athletes, I would suggest doing something that's very um, basic before and after those movements so that when they're first moving or first learning how to move in those and counts that they have recovery time or maybe some setup time. Okay. Okay, great. Thanks, Corey. You sure. know, along with this too, I want you to um, know coaches that you have at your disposal three versions of the music with these with counts that are either with counts or um, you know they're they're going to go left right left right I don't know if you've heard those or not but if you don't have that you can let me know I can send those to you these are great teaching tools for not only you to choreograph a program for a strut routine but it's also very very good for you to have the students uh, practice with so that it becomes ingrained about staying in step left right left right left right one two three four um one of our board members jennifer marcus schwartz she did this very three different variations which is a really wonderful tool i use it all the time now because it's it just it takes the it takes all of the mystery out of being in step or out of step it's it's definitely you hear it 
it's she's saying left, right, left, right, one, two, three, four. It's very, very specific. So I really highly recommend that um, when you start working on a on a, a strut routine, particularly helpful if they've never done the event before, or if you've never done the event in in your coaching um, career. So that's also very helpful as well. Okay, all right. The next thing I want to share with you is that you know we've talked a lot about these really fancy. Uh, fun French words, right? So for all of you dancers, it's it's just another day in the office for you. You know, when you when you hear all these words, you know what these things are. But for those of you who don't, you know, there's all kinds of information that you can uh, you can gather on YouTube. You know, you can get everything on YouTube these days, um, including these webinars. But you can also get every single move that's ever been done in ballet at every level, you can watch it. And there's a link that I've included here with all these ballet terms and ballet moves that will give you a little bit of a, maybe a guideline as to what's possible. You know, if you can't think of an illusion, you can't, if your students aren't ready to do an illusion, then what are you gonna do in strut? Well, you gotta do something. So you have to draw from other moves. There's a myriad of uh, moves that you can draw from, from the ballet world and the dance world in general. So I encourage you to do that. This, um, this link, you can download, it's, uh, Michael's put it in the, in the chat room so you can download that. You know, it's just, it's just an example. You certainly can, can get any um, type of a, of a list or listing from any website uh, on, every, on every level. Ballet is really interesting because they teach a, a little bit similarly to us in various levels. You know, they start with various levels depending on the school. So you could uh, maybe obtain list of moves that would be appropriate for beginning and intermediate levels. Okay. All right, so next let's do the strut. Okay, we're gonna strut our stuff here with Corey. And I wanna tell you that if you want to, wherever you are, if you're in your living room in your kitchen, if you wanna get up and kind of mark it through with Corey as she's going through this to get the feel of this routine, then great. But now we're gonna actually give you coaches an intermediate um, strut routine, starting with the forward motion section. And um, you can use this routine, you can just copy it, just steal it right from Corey and teach it to your students. You can use it as a template to maybe start a program. Um, anyway, it gives you the inspiration, the idea and the motivation in order to get started on the intermediate strut level. So Corey, let's strut our stuff, shall we? <laughs> yes. All right, um, just before we um, get going, um, a couple of things about the intermediate strut for today. Um, first, you're gonna notice that a lot of the steps are exactly the same as the novice and the beginner level. Um, we have taken um, our footwork um, and our movement and slightly modified and increased the difficulty and developed our body a little bit. Um, we have also added um, more difficulty with the baton, um, but these things are in a logical fashion and, um, and some, some are pretty subtle, but even those very minor changes and, um, and that little bit of um, oh, nuance now that we've adding, we're adding with the upper body, the little bit of maturity that we're gonna see now with our intermediate strut um, athletes, um, this is just following this logical progression of teaching and and it allows for us to really focus on the staying in step and really focus on the perfection and also um, the performance qualities so now we can really start pulling those out in our athletes um, and it sets your athlete up for success because now they've already practiced they're kind of tried and true at, at this and we're just adding at their level um, and then it gets to be really fun because now we get to really dance it. We get to really um, perform it. We get to really show off our stuff at a more mature level. All right, so it doesn't matter if you were at the beginning and novice um, strut seminar, webinar, it doesn't matter because um, this could be the beginning for you or you can go back and look at videos if you want, um, but it does, it does follow that logical pro progression. And what I would like to do first is just demonstrate it. I apologize because the first line of the strut is big and I'm probably gonna get out of your camera, but I'll, I'll do my best to try and stay. 
Um, so I'm gonna do that just with the regular strut music, not with the counting one yet, okay? And I'll give myself some volume. Okay. And I'm sorry that I was out of the camera quite a bit. <laughs> um, so along with um, um, our developing of a movement, our movement base and our baton, guess what? <laughs> We're also developing our floor space. So apologize for that. Um, we'll start real slow. Here we go. All right. So the very first thing is now instead of straight on to the front, uh, tendu front, I think we did with our beginners. And maybe we change that for our, inter or for our novice and our beginners. For, for our intermediates, we're now gonna be able to face the corner. So let's do still tendu back, and then let's stylize a little bit with our arm. And I'm gonna give you a little bit of permission to your athletes to do a little bit of a tilt now, okay? So we're gonna start here. And we're still gonna do the same eight counts of feet as we did before. So you're gonna go plie, so plie, and step on your tippy toes, bend your little brush, and a parallel passe saute. So those feet are gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, your baton is just gonna do this. It's gonna go, off the back of the wrist, catch backhand, flourish over the top, and then sweep the arm forward, really reach with the upper body, feel like you're like Tinkerbell for a minute over your toe, and then reverse eight on the saute. So your first eight counts, you have this mature um, look to the corner, and you're performing already to the front, five, six, seven, you go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Then the eight counts that you, I'm sure you didn't get to see any of it, is gonna be a grand jeté. Then the double knee jump that we did last time, one more grand jeté and catch your baton. I'll try and do it mini version. So let's see if I can do a mini win. Okay, kind of maybe right here. So we just did our little saute. So you're gonna go toss, leap, sit, jump, catch, leap, okay? <laughs> That's my mini version. You can do it even smaller in your living room, okay? So on um, count seven, eight, we're still gonna do our height kick, our grand bottom on seven, eight, but now we've caught our baton in our right hand. And so we're gonna do something different. So your baton is gonna go reverse eight, high aerial, catch, slide, pass, and that pass is going to be under your high kick, okay? All right, I'll try and do all of that in mini, mini form. So you have five, six, seven, eight, leap, jump, leap, and seven, eight, okay? We're gonna go on, because that's probably as good as it's gonna get in here. All right, so then you're gonna recover. You get two counts to recover. So left, right, and then step to the back, PA, same as we did in our other struts, PK, and cross lunge. Okay, so basically those feet are the same. You get two counts of recovery, and then a plie, PK, cross lunge the same. All right, so your baton is now in your left hand. You're just gonna do a reverse eight, turn to the back, and you can do a drop down the back, 
You can do over the shoulder. I'm just gonna do the straight arm one, back catch right now. And then flourish. And then for your intermediate strutters, I would give them some kind of presentation, a really nice arm gesture to the front, a chance to really perform, okay? So the, from the high kick on seven, eight, you're gonna go toe, toe with your reverse A, off down the back or whichever back catch you want, flourish with the PK and a step and a nice lunge uh, presenting time, okay? So you did, let's go, let's do that with counts and then we'll go on. So this was seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, then we're gonna go on and we're gonna do the same feet that we did before. So it's two toe, toe walks going straight across and then a Shanae turn into the pas de cha, right into the little petit bama. It's a brush with a plie, okay? Now we're just gonna add a little variety of release. So you're gonna go hand roll and note that it's off center, open hand toss, okay? So don't, don't um, have them choke up or change it. Let, let it stay off center so you can re release that nice open hand toss. And when you catch the open hand toss, we're gonna do a head catch, which is nice for strut because you can reach up and see your baton and still keep your body lifted. So we're gonna go to the back, you did here. We're gonna do your hand roll. You're gonna to toss in the back and do your head catch and then just lock it on your arm and then just present those arms one more time. So that eight count is going to look like this. Toe, toe, chine, head catch, pas de cha, plie. Okay, that's a nice place to present and breathe. Okay, very good. Um, then our floor pattern, remember now, goes to the back corner. So our floor pattern is gonna stay the same when, uh, as we develop, and that is really the choreographer's design. So you choose wherever your athlete goes on the floor, it's up to you, keep it balanced as if you were trying to use all of the stage. Okay, so we're gonna go to our back corner, and this is where we are gonna do our flat, our flat aerial. Okay, so we did our present and our baton is in our left hand. Let me back up so you can see my feet, present, and you're gonna go step and then step on PK. And with your left foot, your athlete can probably kick their head. I can't kick my head, but I could do a really beautiful attitude, okay? Or maybe your athlete does a nice arabesque. So any of those options would be fine. Okay, so you're gonna go one, two, step three, four. Then you're gonna do a PK turn toward that back corner on your left foot. This is gonna be a turned out PK turn. So when you step onto the PK, you're already stepping onto a straight and pointed foot and you're gonna do one, one turn on it, okay? So you did one, two, step three, four, turn five, six, and on seven, eight, you're still going to that back corner. You're gonna do a sauté arabesque and that's a step arabesque hop, okay? All righty. So let's go, we did our pas de chat. We did our little plie, and then we're gonna pass your baton. We're gonna do a match hand pass and slice our arms back as if we're trying to press our shoulder blades together, and that'll be your head kick part. Then you're gonna step and pass, keep turning and do the bottom half of your flat eight. So it's gonna be pass bottom half, and then toss flat on the sote. All right, so that looks like Seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. Okay, so now we stopped kind of mid trick. Here we go. So, seven, eight is your saute. One, two is going to be the front cabriole that we learned earlier we talked about. So, we did our saute step. We're still going back kind of to that corner, but I would do this trick a little bit to the front right, left corner. Okay, the, the cabriole. So you're gonna go cabriole there, step, and then you're just gonna catch your baton at that point and do your rondo jump just like you did in your novice and your beginner strut around the corner. 
Remember that's our soccer ball kick. So it's turned out and you sweep that leg as if you're trying to show everybody the inside of your heel, okay? So let's do that eight. Um, starting, we're gonna start from seven, eight, which is the toss with the arabesque cock, okay? Ready? And five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. Oh, I guess I didn't get all the way through. Then on five, six, you're still gonna do the same exact feet as you did in beginner, five, six. And then you're gonna step back one more time onto a straight knee still, do a parallel passe. And this is a little layback around. Okay, your baton was flat. And now it does the same thing that used to, cradle over. And now instead of just pinching back, we're gonna do a whole circle with both arms. Okay, so that is going to look like we did our attitude. Let's go, let's go from there. So we did our turn and, oh, sorry. We did our pass and our turn and saute, right cabriole, grand de jambe, toe, toe, and your little layback with your pique passe, okay? Should we do that much with some music? You wanna do that? Okay, I'll try and do mini version and stay in your screen. And let's see, which version of strut should we use? Wanna do the left, right? Okay, let's do the left, right. Here we go. All right. So we'll do that first part. carried away looking at the camera and I got a little bit out of step so we don't want to do that but that's because I was really not focused on my feet I was focusing on the picture that's not good so this is really five six seven eight okay just for the clarification of that okay let's move on so we're gonna go this is five six seven eight um you're gonna take two little steps and in a little, little plie. So you're just gonna step and plie through. Then you're gonna re-step with this one. Your back foot, your left foot is gonna do, um, it's gonna do a hop. So from here, you're gonna go saute and that passe now is turned out. Um, what I would like you to try and get your athlete to do is to get the, the big toe, like at least at the groove of your knee. Okay, there's a little spot there for their big toe to go. That'd be nice. Okay, so we have some good turnout. Um, really, really try and uh, get them to turn out that, that leg to press that back. Okay, so we're gonna go walk, saute turned out, then step in front, and then we're gonna do a kick in our second position to our right corner, seven, eight, okay? Um, with the baton, you did our big circle. You're just going to hook it behind a little whip. And this arm kind of just follows through. And then a front um, aerial with a, your right arm high and fifth. And you're going to catch it inside your leg. Okay. So you did seven, eight, one, two, three, four, catch five, six. Then you're going to pivot turn still on seven, eight, just like we've done in the past. But your baton is going to continue to move in a clockwise direction. It's going to wind up, okay? So you caught it here. This is going to wind up and make an, a circle with your elbow, okay? Simple el elbow circle going the same direction that you were already going. And that's count seven, eight, okay? You can look over your shoulder and make that a fun little, a fun little pivot, okay? All right. So... After seven, eight, you're gonna take two steps straight to the back wall, left, right, left, right. And then you're gonna step out into your second left and into your second right, left, right. 
We're going to do another little rabichon, but this time we're not doing a plie soccer ball kick. We're doing a little releve lift with a, that um, leg is going to circle around. So you're going to go walk left, right, toe, toe, lift around, then close into fifth because now we're going to get to do our shandra. Okay? All right. So the baton is super simple. We're doing our pivot turn. And then we're gonna unwind it and do a backhand release. And your left arm is gonna circle through. Okay, so that looks like this to the front. All right, so we did wind up, backhand circle, present your left, present your right. And now all you're gonna do is flip your baton over. Just gonna change ends, okay? Like you want to salute. Okay, so just change ends as you come around. And then we're getting ready for a nice high toss. Well, pretty high, maybe two turn height, maybe three turn height, um, because that is in the middle of our counts. We're gonna do our changement and catch that aerial backhand. And that's going to be a backhand reverse illusion. So we're gonna go just up to the toss first. So our eight counts, all right, ready? So we did five, six, this was seven, eight, walk. One, two, open three, four, up five, six, seven, eight. Okay, then to step for the catch, we're gonna step a little bit with our left foot and we're gonna do our reverse illusion as we catch backhand low. So we're gonna catch it on the way down. Okay, so you're following the rotation and instead of catching it anywhere else, you're gonna catch it when it's about here with your reverse illusion on that. Okay, so that um, is the end of that trick. So let's add that in. So we did seven, eight, and we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two is gonna be that reverse illusion then. Okay, so now you are ready to go a little, you're gonna just do basically a little rebound backward in a plie um, with a a little bit more, maybe 45, okay? As you do that, you're gonna lean away toward your supporting leg. Then you're gonna switch your legs a little teeny hitch kick, the teeniest one, so it doesn't really have the first leg at all. It just is a little switch, and then a PK arabesque, okay? So that's going to be, let's start on one, two. So one, two is going to be the reverse illusion as you caught it, one, Two, uh oh, <laughs> good balance. Three, four, five, six, and then you're just gonna walk out of it. Okay, you're kind of gonna walk in place on seven, eight. Let's do that with the baton. Okay, so this is going to be seven, eight, one, two, and then ah, three, four is gonna be a reverse eight. Did I tell you how the baton was gonna go? I think I forgot about that. So reverse eight here, reverse eight, lock it on your arm, first arabesque. So reverse eight lock and you're there okay all right on um on the next thing that you're going to do with your baton is you're going to kind of just box it up and you're going to do a can opener so your release is going to come so whatever the bottom end is going to come on the inside of your arm okay and that can opener you're just going to catch it behind your back you can put a little bit more revolution on it and a flourish okay you're just doing that with two steps and a little turn. So from here, you're gonna go three, four, five, six, can opener, catch, flourish. Okay, so three, four. Now you're gonna turn to the back and you're gonna brush and you're gonna do two petite batmas. So left, right. So your first one is going to brush the floor and brush out kind of like when we did our cabriole and you're gonna to jump to it, and you're gonna land with your right foot in coupe, and then you do the other one, left foot in coupe. All right, and your arms are just gonna to tilt to the left and to the right. Okay, so you did your back catch, and you go, oh, back catch, flourish, turn around, and five, six, and then on seven, eight, you're just gonna to turn to that front corner and do a PK with a little petite batma and a present of your arms because that's getting ready now for kind of your last bit of strut line, okay? So let's do that much. Let's go maybe from, 
Maybe we'll go from the flat trick and then um, we'll do that with some music. All right. Okay, here we go. So we're walking, we'll do it in the correct place. choreography for today. Um, would you like me to do it in mini drill with some music <laughs> so we can see or does everybody is everybody good with that? Maybe one more time. Okay, maybe I'll put on a different version. Yeah, okay, that would be good. I'll do the the counting and left rights. There we go. Okay, I'll try and do it in mini drill and I'll really try and stay in your screen. I'm sorry. We understand. Uh, one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Left, right, left, right, left, right. like that sort of like that okay and then back to dale <laughs> okay okay <laughs> great great Corey. that was great i could watch you strut literally all day long now there's a couple of things that i want to mention uh coaches did you when you watch Corey, do you notice that um, first of all she's an excellent strutter being a grand national strut champion um herself but she's also an excellent teacher. She's very well aware of her body. But, you know, she introduced nuance and she made it look beautiful. You know, there's so, there's the expression in the upper part of the body that I was really drawn to and how she choreographed beauty and expression within the routine that really, I think, will make your athletes feel like that they're beautiful when they're out on the floor. And that's the purpose. I hope, coaches, that you did get the impression that these nuances and this routine and this approach, this is not artistic twirl. This is not dance twirl. It's not, it's its own identity. And this does not even resemble artistic twirl or dance twirl. They have to be totally separate. So we have to approach it, you know, with, with, uh, with that in mind. Um, the other thing I wanna to mention too is, Corey mentioned a recovery. Corey, when you mentioned recovery, can you just elaborate on that just a little bit? There was a couple of moves where, and I think this is an important um, thing for the athletes to understand about recovery of certain moves. Yes, okay, so um, a couple of times. So for instance, after our big grand, which is appropriate because it's our grand jeté trick, um, after that, that music is so big and it's such a big trick, we did two counts after that high kick to just relax and recover and make sure that it's you got back in that left right B because there was a lot of counts in that were that were using the end counts so you had several in a row okay with the the um, saute passe and then the leap and then the double knee jump and then another leap and then a step and a kick so those were the recovery counts for that particular trick um, 
There's probably, um, probably also after the illusion catch is kind of another recovery because it just made the most sense from here to just recover with something nice and open and easy out of that. Um, also, after, um, I would say after the front cabriole, which is using an and eat count, okay, so then you have something that's very um, one, one count for every step that comes right after that. So it makes it harder, um, makes it, so you, you add more difficulty if you have a lot of those um, steps that take the and count or the and e count in a row. So um, in order to make it appropriate for our intermediate level, then we added some recovery steps. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for it, Corey. I really appreciate that. Um, again, we do want to reiterate to uh, you coaches that when you explain that, what Corey just explained that to us, when you explain it to your athletes, that they are thoroughly aware of that so that they don't misconstrue that with being in or out of step, that they'll know what the difference is. Um, coaches, you'll, you'll notice that in, not only in this webinar, but in our novice and beginner webinar, that we did not address the presentation portion. You do know that at the very beginning, we have the presentation portion, which is not in step. Um, and the reason that we did not address that because we find that that's the easy part for all of you to, to choreograph. And the challenging part for not only you as a, as a coach, but the athlete to execute is the forward motion, what we call the forward motion being in step. So we wanted, to, once you, this is really the, the nuts and the bolts of it. This is what really separates everything from the event is being in step. All of your big points, all of the big money is really in the forward motion part. The forward, the presentation part, um, like I said, doesn't have to be in step. It could be, you know, the tricks that would typically not be in step. So you could do that too. So um, yeah, that's, that's uh, Corey, that was really wonderful. If, any, if anybody has questions regarding this presentation, if you have questions, um, I'm gonna, I will answer them in the, uh, the Q&A. If you think of something afterwards, let's say next week, if it's on YouTube, you watch it again, you still have questions, always reach out to us. Like I said in the beginning of this webinar, we're here to really help you. We want you to be successful. <clears throat> You're not in this alone. You have a lot of friends and you have a lot of supporters and a lot of nurturers and anybody can, that you know that uh, that needs the help is going to get it because we want people to be excited about this um, event as you can probably tell I am and um, I really want there to be a resurgence of this and I want it to really take on a completely different look and a completely um, different level of enthusiasm you know this coming season or whenever we're together strutting our stuff you know once again. So anyway, I do want to uh, thank you all for attending this webinar. And like I said, you know, if if things come up, please feel free to reach out to us. I do want to thank Corey particularly, you know, for all of that valuable information that she provided, and also the coaches department for all of their support and um, you know their direction, you know, on guiding us, um, you know, through these webinars. Stay tuned for future webinars that we will have on various topics. That brings me to another point. If you, the coaches, since we are here simply to serve you, if there's something that you need, if there's a webinar that you would love to see in the future, tell us, we'll, we'll come up with it. We're all getting pretty good at, at this Zoom thing, I think, so we can, we can figure something out for you. So anyway, I would like to, uh, again, thank everyone for coming and I wish everyone a very safe and uh, you know uh, eventful, the next week and uh, please stay tuned and stay in touch with us as best you can. Okay. All right. Very good. Before yeah. everybody um, logs off, would you like to answer some of the questions from the Q and A? Yes, of course. Of course. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we, 
Yeah, we had a question here. So the triple time count is allowed. Right, so uh, Dale, not everybody yeah. can see the questions in the Q&A. So Julia is going to ask them on screen for you now. OK, perfect. Yeah, perfect. So one of the questions is from Marshall. It says, so triple time count is allowed, right? Um, as opposed to, so a one and a two as opposed to a one and two. Uh, yes, if you're referring to the and count and it really, you you can say that that is allowed, but if you apply it to the actual steps that's that's involved in order to, um, to hit the beat of the music, either borrowing from the previous count or elongating it, yes, then it would be. I think, I think some people do refer to that as triple. Okay. And then the next question is also from Marshall and it is, present, can presentation be a part of forward motion? No, it cannot. Presentation is, is uh, by itself, it's 32 counts by itself and it's not part of the presentation or part of the forward motion. There is an acknowledgement that happens just before the forward motion. So everything leading up to that acknowledgement pose is considered for um, presentation in that regard. And then okay. regarding the two questions that you asked previously, um, Marshall also asked, is the main focus, just to confirm, the main focus is on fluidity, musicality, and body, um, body emphasis, and not so much on big tricks. That is exactly right. And let's state that again. Remember, this routine can be done without your baton, and it can be great. Added, adding the baton means that the baton is complementing this wonderful body choreography that you've created. It does not mean that you're out there doing a roll section, elbow rolls or pops or back neck rolls. All those things that are done in solo would be inappropriate for strut. So this is a body dominant event. In fact, coaches, check yourself. After you've choreographed a strut routine for your athletes, have them go through the routine without the baton and check to make sure that it is a body uh, oriented event and that it, the body is in place the way you want it. Then lay the baton, layer the baton on top of that to complement that, um, that body work. Okay, yeah, but we can't stress enough. We want to make sure that it's technically correct, good body work in step, in step, obviously that has to be important, and that it does not resemble, does not resemble artistic twirl um, or dance twirl. And then another question is, can you provide USTA's definition of presentation? Um, I don't have it right in front of me right now, but presentation would be any body work with complementary baton that is done not regarding any, the in-step requirement that is done by the forward motion. So it is body dominant for sure. It's not a, a three turn. It's not a two turn. It would be, if you want to do a two turn, what would you do in this event? You would do it as a Chenet turn, right? So you have to apply the French word to whatever it is that you really want to do, so to speak. So you would want to do that as well, but you would not be regarding or wouldn't be paying attention particularly to if it's in step or out of step because it doesn't have to have that requirement. So, and it also, it doesn't travel as much. There could be a little bit of traveling from side to side, possibly in presentation, but it's not something that's going to cover the floor. It's basically uh, stationary because you're going to cover the floor and utilize floor coverage on the forward motion part. And then the last question as of now is that um, the beginning of the song wasn't used. That can be used, correct? That's correct. That's all part of the presentation. When it begins, there's an introduction, and then there's the presentation part, which is the 32 uh, counts of that. And so we didn't use that because that's the easy part to do. That's not what's really challenging so much. So you can you can see um, if you go to our YouTube channel, you can actually look at old strut routines from a long time ago, and you're going to see the way strut used to be with presentation, it used to be, well, actually back in those days, we had military L march 
then the presentation, then the forward motion. Well, we got rid of the, the military L march and we've now combined everything um, at the beginning to be presentation. You can kind of see what that looked like back in those days before they had actually had to uh, tear out of there and do their forward motion in step. Okay, so that's on YouTube if you wanna take a look at that. But if you, if like I said, you put all of your emphasis and your real teaching skills are to the test with your athletes in the forward motion, that's what is the money part of this event, okay? So you really spend a lot of time on that. And now does on beat equal USTA's version of in step? I'm sorry? Does on beat basically mean in step? Yes, on beat means in step. Um, for instance, in basic strut, basic march in the box strut, there's no such thing as the and step. It's left, right, left, right, clear as a bell, left, right. So that's on beat, no doubt about it. There's nothing there, there's no baton work. And so that is really on beat or in step. Um, and then the YouTube channel, if you just look up US twirling, is that? It's, yeah, I believe it's actually all spelled out. United States Twirling Association, I believe. Perfect. If you and just then, put it in the, uh, you know, the search bar, it comes right up. And then another question is, do you suggest any floor, any floor work during presentation? You, yes, that, that's, it's totally appropriate to do that. Um, there's nothing really wrong with doing floor work because that's body. You're going to be utilizing body with probably some sort of complementary baton with it. So there's nothing really wrong with that. Just be careful though, that it's not perceived as artistic twirl or dance twirl. You wanna make it, you know, there are some moves that could be used in both of those routines possibly, but you wouldn't wanna go out there and just look as though you're doing something directly right out of your artistic twirl routine and just sticking it in the presentation and hoping it works. Try to be creative so that it looks like a strut presentation. And then going off that question, can you do floor, floor work during forward motion? Well, um, I've seen it in the past um, before and it has been in step. I would caution you greatly about using that because you would have to be a pretty high level athlete knowing exactly where they are within the beat. And remember, you've got to go left, right, left, right, left and right, or you've got to stay within. So you'd have to be pretty darn creative with utilizing floor work, maybe down to the knee and back up possibly, you know, something like that. I would just, I would caution you to, about doing that. that. That's a big alarm that I would, um, you know, I would cast out there. There are no more questions as of right now. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. I think that that was great. We got a lot of really great information. I know I'm inspired. I'm ready to start teaching strut. You know, if I can start getting into a gym, if I can get some students there in front of me uh, now. So it's really inspiring to know that there's so much available to us to create this beautiful event. And we certainly are counting on you coaches to do that. We really are counting on you and we're nurturing you and we're going to help you every step of the way. So um, good luck. Good luck with that and have fun strutting. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you for coming.